The first thing that my dad said to me when I suggested that I take him for his 75th birthday to Uluru was, it's a long way to travel to see a bloody big rock. What could you possibly see that you hadn't seen precisely a thousand times before in postcards? Flying over Uluru is one of the more extraordinary flights that you can take. Australia is an enormous continent. The vast majority is a seemingly endless expanse of red earth that's harsh and dry and tough. And more and more Australians and also foreigners were telling me that, that it was really a spiritual monument. When we decided to go for a few days rather than one day, I thought, oh well, we'll just hang out on the veranda and drink a few beers and, and catch up. What I discovered on the trip was that a visit there is far more than just seeing the rock itself. It's quite odd because visitors walk around the site in quiet reverence, like they would be in in a holy place, because they are in a holy place. It's quite similar to the experience of being in a cathedral or a mosque, except in the middle of the desert. So too do the local Ananu elders tell the stories of the place, its significance and also its lessons. It would be fair to say that most Australians know little of the teachings and culture of the continent's original inhabitants. In fact, my major takeaway is that to be born in Australia is to be connected totally to its landscape. Many travellers had mentioned to both my dad and myself that we would be affected by the otherworldly aura of the site. What I can say clearly is that it offers a singular experience of being dwarfed by nature in a benign way and enlightened by the values and startling beauty of the world's oldest living culture. <laughs>